For how much market dominance Nvidia has in this industry, when you hear that they're strong arming their partners and perhaps even threatening them to not work with one of their competitors, it speaks volumes on Nvidia's confidence. Nvidia hasn't gotten into this position they have today simply by making good products and appeasing their clientele. There's been a lot of anti-competitive tactics utilized, and with Intel looking at growing their market share, it seems like they're back at it again with their antics. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I'm someone who's been a PC gamer since I can remember. However, I didn't actually start to take interest in PC hardware until about 2008 where I built my own gaming PC. Some of the parts consisted of a Q6600 for the CPU, an Asus P5K motherboard, and also an XFX 8800 GT Alpha Dog Edition graphics card. Yep, back then XFX, who are a well-known AIB partner for AMD these days, used to make NVIDIA graphics cards, and they were fairly popular and they had some pretty cool designs as well. I kind of miss how graphics cards used to have good art on the shroud, whereas today it's RGB, sharp angles, and waifus. Maybe I can overlook that last one, but that's besides the point. Now you might be wondering what happened. Why isn't XFX still making NVIDIA GPUs? Well, the reason for that is simple. NVIDIA got mad at XFX. In 2009, XFX had decided to broaden their portfolio of products by making ATI slash AMD graphics cards. This was a move that many PC gamers back then were happy to hear about, as this would give them more options to choose from in this growing market. NVIDIA didn't like this at all, and a year later decided to give XFX the axe, by deauthorizing them from their list of approved partners and didn't send them any new Fermi chips which were supposed to be used for their GTX 400 series the following year. Not only that, but Nvidia had encouraged other channel partners to stop working with XFX. XFX at that point had no choice but to move on and focus on their AMD products. Back then, people looked at this as a very stupid move by Nvidia. XFX were huge back then, and while they're still very much a relevant brand today, they just had a different type of following when they were producing NVIDIA GPUs. AIBs assist these GPU manufacturers in helping them actually deliver their products to the market. When NVIDIA made this move to cut off XFX, they thought that this was going to hurt NVIDIA pretty badly. Clearly, that didn't affect them as bad as people thought it would, if at all. The same way people thought EVGA exiting out of the GPU market last year would have an effect on sales for the 40 series. While sales for the 40 series aren't as great as NVIDIA would like them to be, it's not because people are sad that EVGA doesn't make GPUs anymore and therefore people are boycotting NVIDIA. The reason why I bring this up is because of this rumor that has surfaced on the web which I've been wanting to discuss with you guys for a while now. This was posted on Video Card's website where their source is claiming Nvidia is not too thrilled about AIBs working with Intel for the next generation graphics cards. Now I say rumor and of course you should take it with a grain of salt, but given what we just talked about with XFX, it doesn't sound too far-fetched now does it? Currently on the market, Intel has their Arc A series, also known as Alchemist, and they don't have too many partners making their cards alongside their reference models. Here in North America, we've got custom models from ASRock and Acer, who have been the primary partners for the Arc A series. Over in China, I believe there are more companies making custom Intel graphics cards, but when it comes to their big main brands like Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte, they don't have or barely have any custom models based on Intel's GPUs. The Arc A series have been on the market for a while now, and Intel are looking forward at releasing a new series to gain more market share and make their brand well known. I wouldn't call their Arc A series super successful, but for a first attempt, they turned out decent, albeit with some rocky drivers at the very beginning, which did hamper reviews. However, if you do a search for reviews now with videos using the latest drivers, you'll find the overall experience people are having is quite positive and they are recommending the A-Series as a viable option for consumers, especially considering how cheap they've become compared to the NVIDIA counterparts. Vex recently made a video talking about his 30-day experience with Intel Arc, and I definitely recommend checking his video out. He goes very thorough with everything he did, talks about the various pros and cons, and at the end of the day, he did say that you know, it turned out to be a pretty viable option. Looking on ahead though, their next series for consumers is going to be called Battle Mage, and there's plenty of rumors, leaks, and news videos out there pertaining to the specs along with performance surrounding the upcoming series. Not going to go into too much detail here as this is a topic for a different video, but from what I'm hearing, it seems promising, and given Intel's recent pricing structure, they could give both AMD and NVIDIA a run for their money. Going back to the post, Pro High Tech stated that NVIDIA became aware of the potential partnerships and began to 
threaten its partners that if they took Intel on, then Nvidia would no longer work with them and they would not receive chips. This is translated, so some of the wording is a bit off here, but the messaging is pretty clear. One of the other interesting parts they bring up is NVIDIA's old GPP program, where they shut down after a lot of public backlash. Essentially, through some financial means, they were leveraging their partners' brands and premium brands for only their GeForce graphics cards. If ASUS was to make Republic of Gamers or ROG GPUs, it was only supposed to be for NVIDIA GPUs. For AMD, they were supposed to use a different brand or one of their cheaper brands like the Tough or Dual Series. The thing is, NVIDIA seems to treat their partners like absolute garbage, and it's one of the reasons why EVGA said they were done making GPUs, because they no longer wanted to be treated as some tool by NVIDIA and wanted to be treated more like an actual partner. NVIDIA doesn't just dominate the market by appeasing gamers through offering great performance and cool software. They rule the market with an iron fist. If you want to know more, then I highly recommend checking out this older video from Adore TV that's still very much relevant today, where he goes through a whole history of NVIDIA's anti-competitive tactics they've used in the market basically since their inception in the industry. But going back to the topic on hand, this is a very interesting situation we've got on our hands because Intel are actually looking to compete in the market. I've given up on AMD because it's clear they're content with just following Nvidia's lead, and Lisa Su has publicly stated their priority now is in the AI and data center, so they don't care either. With Battlemage, Intel are looking at bringing more powerful products to the market in the hands of consumers, and a lot of people are anticipating them, myself included, and I could see Nvidia feeling a bit threatened here. Near the launch of the RTX 40 series, Nvidia CEO said that the era of cheap GPUs is gone, and Moore's Law is dead, only to do a 180 on that last part during Computex. Moore's Law is probably currently running at about two times a thousand times in five years but to their first point shortly after intel released arc their pricing structure wasn't terrible but given how rough performance was at launch and reviewers couldn't recommend them it just didn't seem worth it at the time even for the lower prices they were charging compared to nvidia however the fact of the matter is is what intel did directly did contradict what nvidia ceo said plus on the flip side though given how fast they were able to turn the ship around I'm confident that th with their next iteration, Battle Mage, we should hopefully get a much more polished product that won't have nearly as much problems as the A-Series did. Given what we've heard so far pertaining to specs, and you know, if they remain competitive, they'll have a good shot at making a dent in the stronghold established by Nvidia. Along with that, if Intel does make a good product, then AIBs will want to make cards for them as well. In fact, Intel already has a pretty good partnership established with a lot of these major brands because they make motherboards for them. The situation now in the landscape of this market is different compared to what it was back in 2010. Brands like MSI, ASUS, and Gigabyte are simply too large for NVIDIA to go, well, we're just going to completely cut you off. While NVIDIA would love to do just direct sales and get rid of the middleman, which is the AIVs in this case, they simply can't because they're not in a position to scale their operations to such a wide degree. Hence, they're reliant on AIVs to make sure their product reaches a wider user base. Intel is in the same position, and with the help of AIVs, they can ensure the products get in the hands of many consumers as possible. This will create more competition in the market, which is something Nvidia doesn't want. At this point, you reap what you sow, and Nvidia, you've shot yourself in the foot this time. I know some people will state that this is just business and Nvidia can do whatever they want and whoever they choose to send chips to, and you're right. However, if you're so concerned with this, then you should simply focus on delivering a good product, one that people will actually want instead of resorting to anti-competitive and anti-consumer practices. There were also some rumors recently surrounding the upcoming RTX 4060 Ti 16GB. This card is apparently set to release on the 18th of July, which is in a couple days, and according to Hardware Unboxed, Nvidia isn't going to be sending out review samples to the press, and even their partners have said they won't be seeding samples to the press. It seems like they want to quietly release this product, and the only reason for this is because both Nvidia and their partners know how much of a shit product this is, and want to avoid bad press at this point. If it was actually a good GPU, then you'd see them make a lot of noise about it. If you go back and take a look at reviews for the 4060 series, they're absolutely atrocious. This would have been the third time in a row where reviewers would have just trashed Nvidia for releasing a garbage product, and rightfully so, but then their partners also get ca caught up in that crossfire. Who in their right mind would go out and purchase an RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte when you can find an RX 6800 for cheaper, a card that is much faster and will actually be able to utilize that VRAM? You know it's bad when board partners themselves are coming out and stating we have no interest in promoting this garbage. 
around the time when the 4070 Ti was coming out, I had an AIB reach out to me and ask if I wanted to review one of their models. While I'm always open to testing, I told them up front that it's a product I'm not enthusiastic about and you can most certainly expect quite a bit of negativity from the review. Which shouldn't even matter, at the end of the day a review is open, like you say whatever you want, good or bad, It's you're giving feedback for the product. But since then I haven't really heard back from them. The margins that these AIBs have on these cards is very slim, they're not the ones making the chips, that's Nvidia, so they're trying to do whatever it is to avoid the bad press. It really just comes down to Nvidia not only screwing themselves over, but everyone else in the process. The partners and consumers. All in all, I think Intel joining the discrete gaming GPU market was one of the best things to happen in this industry because we desperately needed some real competition. Nvidia doesn't even recognize AMD as a viable player, but Intel are different and I think with Battle Mage, this has gotten Nvidia spooked. It's baffling because you have Nvidia who are well known in the market, if they actually delivered a 4060 that had appropriate specs and wasn't so overpriced price then people would buy their gpus and they wouldn't have to worry about competition they're already well established this is what happened when the arc a series came out when intel was having a rough time at the start people said that hey this is interesting but we can't recommend this go buy a 3060 or go buy a 6700 because they're coming from established brands they already have good drivers and it just works so when you have a product that actually works people want it why resort to anti-consumer garbage and tactics they should let the products do the talking for them but let me know what you guys think i hope that some of these partners don't succumb to Nvidia's strong arming and preventing them from broadening their product portfolio because it doesn't benefit anyone except for them. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.